I had a little uh, opportunity the other day to do a little research into the Valley of the Mage and the Mage of the Vale, and I thought I'd uh, talk about the Mage himself today on Greyhawk Grognard. So the Valley of the Mage is one of the most evocative places in the world of Greyhawk. Just the name makes you, you know, it's, it sounds mysterious, it implies there's this powerful wizard there who's, you know, there's a, it's just a terrific name and a terrific idea. And uh, of course it all hinges on the mage himself. There have been a couple of different iterations of that mage, and I wanted to go through that. I'm going to go th kind of go through it in reverse order though. Uh, this is the one that most Greyhawk fans are going to be familiar with, right? This is the officially published module, Veil of the Mage. Um, this has the most well-known incarnation of the mage, which is Jason Crimea. He is a, an outcast from the uh, Great Kingdom. Uh, he attempted to seize the throne from the Overking, and because he was a relative of the Overking, he wasn't slain outright, but he was banished. Um, he's very paranoid, uh, wants, uh, keeps believing he's being scried and pursued by the agents of the Overking who now want to kill him. So he's very, uh, you know, very reclusive. That's why he went into the Valley of the Mage to, um, uh, you know, to protect himself and to, you know, to escape from his pursuers. Um, he's also... Uh, uh, presented as somebody who values magic above all things. Um, he believes that magic users, you know, basically should rule, uh, and which is why he tried to overthrow the Overking in the first place. Um, and uh, he's assembled an, a force of valley elves, and there are gnomes, and there are some humans, and, some, and, and so forth in the valley that protect his lands. Um, when you look through the uh, the the details of it though a few things don't quite add up um, and especially when we compare them to the original presentation of the Valley of the Mage which was in the folio I have here the, the uh, guide to the world of the text is the same uh, when it comes to the, the valley um, and uh, basically it says there are maybe 10,000 humans uh, possibly elves and gnomes, um, uh, and it says, long ago, a mighty wizard secluded himself in the lush valley, um, and then uh, somewhere in here it says, ba -da -ba -da 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 -ba. yeah, so long ago. Um, and that's pretty much all we have. It's supposed to be mysterious, it's supposed to be evocative. And um, but when you ch when you go through some of the elements of the story, they don't quite add up. And uh, the first thing we have in in the story of Jason Crimea, which is here and which was kind of retold in the Greyhawk Adventures book, uh, where he's detailed as a, an NPC, um, is that he tried to overthrow the Great King, the you know the Over King of the Great Kingdom, uh, because that individual couldn't cast spells. Now that doesn't quite jive with what we know about Ivid, who is the overking in uh, Rauxes in 576, when the you know when the guide is is published, um, because the overking Ivid is a magic user. He's a very powerful magic user, and the idea that uh, Jason didn't uh, think he should rule because he wasn't a magic user doesn't quite jive. Um, and, you know, we, we are told that this happened a few decades ago. He, he, Jason Crimea is 80 years old, um, you know, so it could have happened maybe before Ivid was, uh, w was, was, was over King. But that doesn't jive with the timeline they give in here, which says that this all happened a couple of decades ago. Um, which implies, you know, a couple of decades, two or three decades. It could be, you know, the, so maybe 540 around there, uh, so common year. Um, so, you know, you could say, okay, that's enough time for it to have been one of Vivid's predecessors. I suppose it could work that way. But then we come across 
a very interesting notation in the El Raja key. Um, uh, where is it? Getting away from the glare is, is hard here. Okay, yeah. So this is the, the Rob Kuntz um, uh, archive that he that he publishes. I'll, uh, I'll I'll try to find a link and put it in the in the description. Um, where he this is basically a whole bunch of material that was originally developed for Greyhawk that was was not officially published. It's important to to note that. Um, but it does give an idea of what was going on in Rob and Gary's minds regarding the valley when this was published, because this stuff dates from that time period, um, you know, the, the 70s and early 80s. Uh, and this tells us that um, the, the Mage of the Vale uh, came there in 404 common year so 172 years before this at least 120 years before this says he got there so there is that discrepancy between the 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 mysterious mage of the veil we have here and the well detailed mage of the veil we have here so I think that this was, I mean, I mean, obviously, this is not Gary's idea of what the the Mage of the Veil vale was supposed to be. This this was written by Gene uh, Rabe, Rabe. I'm not really sure how you pronounce uh, the name, but um, well, this was definitely post uh, Gary uh, at TSR. So you know, it's a, it's we can expect it not to be his original conception, but to have it vary that much, as in the Mage was only there for. a 20 30 years as opposed to the mage has dwelled there for 100 you know for more than 100 years that's a big discrepancy and i think we can we need to you know call that out um now there's another version of the mage of the veil vale, and i i would think that this uh mage of the veil vale from the gourd the rogue uh, novels, uh, the, especially the later ones. Um, this actually comports a little more to the idea, the feel we get of the ma of the Mage of the Veil vale from here um, than it does, obviously, from here, because this is Basilev. Uh, Basilev uh, is a very powerful uh, magic user. He's in league with the forces of balance. Um, you know, so he's 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 an ally of the Hierophant Druids, of the Rosy Cross, of all kinds of these, um, you know, mysterious high-level uh, secret societies that are operating in the Flaness uh, to to hold to keep uh, good and evil, and I guess law and chaos uh, in in balance against one another. Uh, and so Basilev is what's called the Demiurge uh, of of O Earth, and um, Demiurge is a is an interesting title uh it uh, it's a it's an, a comes from an occultist view of the world uh where the the demiurge um you, ha you first you have god and then you have the demiurge and the demiurge is what creates material reality um as opposed to god who only creates the spiritual reality so when according to this occult theory uh when people are uh, worshiping God, what they think is God, they're really worshiping the demiurge, and the obviously the goal of the occultist uh, view is to go beyond that to the reality of God. But anyway, that's the that's not entirely relevant. Uh, but what we have in here is we have the word demiurge really being used as a um, as just a sort of a title to imply enormous power, right? Because we, you know, he's he's he does act as sort of a guardian of the of the world, um, and eventually, spoilers for a book that came out forty years ago, um, uh, or thirty five years ago, uh, 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 Gord eventually takes on the mantle of demiurge of a of a variant of of Earth. Um, so you know, it's, there, there's, there's, it's definitely a, a, an idea of power, but you don't get the idea that he created the world. Um, that, all that being said, um, I think that you know we do have these these varying uh, images of what the the Mage of the Veil vale is and should be. Another um, 
uh, difference that directly is contradicted uh, by by the books is uh, in this version of the valley, uh, the only humans there's only about 800 humans in there, um, and they're called tree folk, and they're kind of the remnants of bandits and brigands and um, and and Renihi and and things like that that kind of wandered in and stayed there to be safe, whereas. Um, in this version, uh, in the glossography, uh, well, here we're told there are ten, maybe 10,000 humans. Um, in the glossography, we're told that they are, um, uh, what are the, the Iridians and Baklunish with a little flan uh, in, in mixing, you know, so there's actually a real population in, in this version. Um, you know, because the, 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 the idea that you know, you would have a, a kind of a, this is what humans are like in the veil kind of doesn't make sense if they're just kind of refugees um, from, from all over. So anyway, um, you know, so there's, there's definitely, I think, a, a tension between the earlier conception um, and the published conception. And then you've got Gary's published conception, which kind of seems different than both of them, although it, it, the, what you see in the book is compatible with what you see in the guide. Um, and technically, I think you could make a case that what's here is also in uh, compatible with what's in the guide with the exception of that population question. I mean, they just kind of uh, brush it off by saying uh, sages think there are 10,000 people, but that's actually wrong. Okay, I mean, yeah, you could you could get, you can say that, um, but you could really say that about anything and just retcon it. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of, of doing that. I'm a fan of kind of, uh, you know, making things fit uh, based on, on published sources, even if they don't even if they seem to contradict one another, but anyway, um, so those are those are my thoughts. Um, I, I don't really have a preference one way or the other. I've never really used the Valley of the Mage in my own game, um, mainly because I'm I'm not a big fan of the presentation here. Um, I think he's too mundane, and in fact, it might even be the case that um, detailing it at all kind of destroys that mystery around the character um you know if if he's left as the the mage of the veil then every dm is free to let their imagination run wild and the players can hear this name and oh my god what could that be but when it's brought down and detailed um you know to a mundane level where oh yeah he's a refugee from the great kingdom he's a powerful magic user and he's a refugee Okay, I mean, you know, it kind of wrecks the illusion, if you know what I mean. So anyway, uh, just a reminder that folks who are on my Patreon get to see these videos two weeks early. So if you want to get that sneak peek, um, please do join the uh, Patreon at any level. Link down below. Um, what do you think about uh, my thoughts on the uh, on the Valley of the Mage and the Mage of the Veil? Vale? Uh, let me know what you think in the comments and hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching today's video. Please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Below you'll find links to my Patreon which helps make these videos possible. You'll also find the web store where you can buy my books, and my blog where you'll find all sorts of free downloads and other articles. Thanks and have a great day.